Melchizedek, Melchizedek, or Malkizedek, Hebrew, Melchizedek Melchizedek, King of Righteousness, Amharic, Melchizedek, Armenian, Melchizedek Melchizedek, was the king of Salem and priest of El Elyon, often translated as God Most High, mentioned in the 14th chapter of the book of Genesis. He brings out bread and wine and blesses Abram and El Elyon, Chazalic literature, specifically Targum Jonathan, Targum Yerushalmi, and the Babylonian Talmud, presents the name Melchizedek as a nickname title for Shem, the son of Noah, in Christianity, according to the Epistle to the Hebrews, Jesus Christ is identified as a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, and so Jesus assumes the role of high priest once and for all. It is speculated that the story of Melchizedek are an informal insertion into the narration, possibly inserted in order to give validity to the priesthood and tithes connected with the Second Temple. His name indicates he may have worshipped Zedek, a Canaanite deity worshipped in pre-Israelite Jerusalem. Name In the majority of Masoretic Hebrew texts the name is written as two words, Meliki Sedek Melchizedek, rendered in one word in both the Septuagint Melchizedek and Vulgate Melchizedesh. The authorized King James Version of 1611 renders the name Melchizedek when translating from the Hebrew, and Melchizedek in the New Testament. The name is composed from the two elements Melech H, King, and Sedek, which means either righteousness or the proper name Zedek, with the addition of the Harit Compagenes I indicating the archaic construct form, Malk I means King of, so that the name literally translates to King of Righteousness or, my king is Zedek, indicating that he worshipped Zedek, a Canaanite deity worshipped in pre-Israelite Jerusalem. The name is formed in parallel with Adoni Sedek Dnyzedek, also a king of Salem, mentioned in the book of Joshua 10 -1 where the element Malik, king, is replaced by Adon, lord. Parallel theophoric names, with Sedek replaced by Yahu, are those of Malchia and Adonijah, both biblical characters placed in the time of David. Hebrew Bible Melchizedek is mentioned twice in the Hebrew Bible, the first in Genesis and the second in Psalms. Genesis chapter 14 The narrative of Genesis chapter 14 is part of the larger story telling how Abram returns from defeating King Chedorlaomer and meets with Bera the king of Sodom, at which point And Melchizedek king of Salem brought out bread and wine, and he was is the priest of the Most High God. And he blessed him, and said, Blessed be Abram to the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth, and blessed be the Most High God, which hath delivered thine enemies into thy hand. And he gave him tithe from all. Some textual critics classify the narration as not being derived from any of the usual Pentateuchal sources. It has been speculated that verses 18 to 20, in which Melchizedek appears, are an informal insertion into the narration, as they interrupt the account of the meeting of Abraham with the king of Sodom. There is no consensus on when or why the story was added. It may have been inserted in order to give validity to the priesthood and tithes connected with the Second Temple. It also may have been inserted to give validity to the superiority of the Zadokite priests over the Levite priests. Lebanese Protestant scholar Kamal Salabi (1929–2011) observes that Hebrew Omazer Masur, which literally does mean tenth, might more loosely be used to mean portion, and Hebrew Mikal Mkl, or from all, might refer just to food in the giver's possession, so that the whole verse might mean he gave him a portion of food. Genesis chapter 14, verse 18 introduces Melchizedek. A priest of the Most High God, El Elyon, a term which is reused in 1419, 20, 22. The term, Most High, is used another 20 times of the God of the Israel in the Psalms. Giorgio Levi della Vita 1944 suspects that this is a late development, and Joseph Fitzmaier 1962 connects Genesis chapter 14 with the mention of a God called, Most High who may appear according to one of three possible translations of a 750 BC inscription found at Al-Safira in Syria. 
Remy Lack considers that the Genesis verses were taken over by Jewish redactors, for whom El was already identified with YHWH. El Elyon became an epithet for the God of Israel. Tithe recipient Due to an ambiguity in the Hebrew text, it is unclear who gave tithe to whom, Abram to Melchizedek, or Melchizedek to Abram. The verse in question states simply, and he gave him tithe from all. V. Yitin lo ma'azer mikal. Witten lu msr and Most translations of this verse preserve the ambiguity, as in the Septuagint, which has edokin otoi, edokin otoi, he gave to him. But some modern translations make explicit the mainstream interpretation of Abram being the giver and Melchizedek the recipient. Targum Pseudo Jonathan, the Book of Jubilees, Josephus, Philo of Alexandria, and Rashi all read Abram as the giver of the tithe to Melchizedek. The Rigachover Gaon, also understanding Abram to be the tithe giver, comments that the presented tithe was not a standard tithe as described in the Torah given on an annual basis, but was a one time tribute offering. Trumat Hamakiz, trooped HMKs such as Moses gave to God in Numbers chapter 31 verse 41, expressing a Kabbalistic point of view. The Zohar commentary to Genesis chapter 14 cites Rabbi Yitzchak as saying that it was God who gave a tithe to Abram in the form of removing the Hebrew letter He from his own throne of glory and presenting it to the soul of Abram for his benefit. Rabbi Meir Simha of Devinsk interprets the phrase, and he gave him tithe from all. As a verbal continuation of Melchizedek's speech, i.e., Melchizedek exclaimed that God had chosen to gift Abram a tenth of God's possession of the entire human race consisting of seventy nations as described in Genesis in the form of the seven nations of the land of Canaan, including the cities of Sodom that Abram succeeded in saving. Rabbi Meir Simha argues that continued speech of this sort was a common form of prophetic expression. Hebrews chapter 7 verses 1 and 4 in the New Testament state that the patriarch Abraham gave a tenth of the spoil to Melchizedek. Topic: <laughs> Samaritan Pentateuch. The Samaritan Pentateuch reads slew lit his peace or in contextual flow allied with him in place of the Masoretic SLM Salem, with addition of a letter W v -A -V. William F. Albright views the Samaritan wording as authentic as does the New American Bible. Regarding the residence of Melchizedek, Samaritan tradition identified a Salem as a place on the slopes of Mount Gerizim which served as a blessing place of the children of Israel upon their initial crossing of the Jordan River. The Samaritans allocate Gerizim and not Jerusalem as the site intended for the temple, and thus the slew text serves an obvious sectarian purpose. However, this practice is not solely associated with the Samaritans. The possessive suffix is also found in the 3rd or 2nd century BCE Book of Jubilees, and Greek possessive suffixes are even used in the Septuagint version of Genesis. Topic. Psalm chapter 110 The second and final Hebrew Bible mention of Melchizedek is in Psalm chapter 110 verse 4. The many translations that follow the Septuagint translate such The Lord hath sworn, and will not repent, thou art a priest forever After the manner of Melchizedek, J.P.S. 1917 Although the above is the traditional translation of the text, the Hebrew text can be interpreted in various ways, and the new Jewish Publication Society of America version, 1985 edition, for example, has You are a priest forever, a rightful king by my decree, J.P.S. 1985 Another alternative keeps Melchizedek as a personal name but changes the identity of the person addressed You are a priest forever by my order or on my account, O Melchizedek here it is Melchizedek who is being addressed throughout the psalm. The majority of Chazalic literature attributes the primary character of the psalm as King David, who was a righteous king, Melchi Zedek of Salem, Jerusalem, and like Melchizedek, had certain priest-like responsibilities. While the Babylonian Talmud understands the chapter as referring to Abram, who was victorious in battling to save his nephew Lot and merited priesthood. 
The Zohar defines the noted Melchizedek as referring to Aaron the Kohen Gadol high priest. Psalm chapter 110 verse 4 is cited in the New Testament letter to the Hebrews as an indicator that Jesus, regarded in the letter as the Messiah, had a right to a priesthood predating the Jewish Aaronic priesthood. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 5 to 6. Topic in Judaism. Hellenistic Judaism Josephus refers to Melchizedek as a Canaanite chief in War of the Jews, but as a priest in Antiquities of the Jews. Philo identifies Melchizedek with the Logos as priest of God, and honored as an untutored priesthood. The Second Book of Enoch, also called Slavonic Enoch, is apparently a Jewish sectarian work of the 1st century AD. The last section of the work, The Exaltation of Melchizedek, tells how Melchizedek was born of a virgin, Sophonim or Saponima, the wife of Nir, a brother of Noah. The child came out from his mother after she had died and sat on the bed beside her corpse, already physically developed, clothed, speaking and blessing the Lord, and marked with the badge of priesthood. Forty days later, Melchizedek was taken by the archangel Gabriel Michael in some manuscripts to the Garden of Eden and was thus preserved from the deluge without having to be in Noah's Ark. <laughs> <laughs> Dead Sea Scrolls 11Q13 11Q Melch is a fragment that can be dated to the end of the 2nd or start of the 1st century BC of a text about Melchizedek found in Cave 11 at Qumran in the Israeli Dead Sea area and which comprises part of the Dead Sea Scrolls. In this eschatological text, Melchizedek is seen as a divine being and Hebrew titles such as Elohim are applied to him. According to this text Melchizedek will proclaim the Day of Atonement and he will atone for the people who are predestined to him. He also will judge the peoples. The Genesis Apocryphon 1 Kapgen repeats information from Genesis. The Qumran scrolls also indicate that Melchizedek was used as a name of the archangel Michael, interpreted as a heavenly priest. Michael is Melchizedek contrast with Belial, who is given the name of Melchi Resha, king of wickedness. The text of the epistle to the Hebrews follows this interpretation in stating explicitly that the name in Greek translation Hermenouomenos means basilisk dikaiosines. King of Righteousness, omitting translation of the possessive suffix, the same passage interprets Melchizedek's title of King of Salem as translating to Basilus Irene's King of Peace, the context being the presentation of Melchizedek's as an eternal priesthood associated with Jesus Christ, Aphimoiomenos de toi hyoioi tu theomene hyrius istodinicus, made like unto the Son of God abided a priest continually. Torah commentaries Hebrew language Torah commentarians of the Rishonim era 11th to 15th centuries have explained the seemingly abrupt intrusion of Melchizedek into the narration in various ways. Hezekiah ben Manoah, c. 1250, points out that the following verses has Abram refusing any of the king of Sodom's possessions, which, if not for the insertion of Melchizedek's hospitality, would prompt the query as to where Abram and his weary men got their refreshments from. The Rashbam, Shmuel ben Meir, 11th century, offers a similar explanation but varies by saying that only Abram's men partook in the booty originally belonging to the king of Sodom whereas the Melchizedek intrusion explains that Abram himself was sustained by Melchizedek since he refused to consume of the luxury of Sodom because his lord was of the non-material world. Likewise, the commentary of Chaim ibn Attar 17th century offers a three-pronged slew of reasons for the Melchizedek insertion. In rabbinic literature The narrative preceding Melchizedek's introduction presents a picture of Melchizedek's involvement in the events of his era. The narration details Abram's rescue of his nephew Lot and his spectacular defeat of multiple kings, and goes on to define the meeting place of Melchizedek and Abram as, Emek Hashava, which is Emek Hamilich. The meeting site has been associated with Emek Yehoshaphat, the Valley of Husaphat. Targumin Kelos describes the meeting location size as a plot the size of a king's reese. 
Midrashic exegesis describes how a large group of governors and kings convened in unison to pay homage to the victor Abram and desired to make him a deity, at which point he declined, attributing his victory to God's might and will alone. The chronological work Seder Ha Dorat published 1769 quotes that Melchizedek was the first to initiate and complete a wall in circumference of the city, and had to exit Salem to reach Abram and his men. Upon exiting Salem, he presented to them bread and wine with the intent to refresh them from their journey. Assuming the premise that Melchizedek was Shem, he would have been 465 years old at the time and Abram was 75 years of age. Chazalic literature unanimously identify Melchizedek as Shem son of Noah Targum Yonathan to Genesis chap. 14, Genesis Rabbah 46-7, Babylonian Talmud to Tractate Netarim 32b. The Talmud Bavli attributes him Shem and his Beth Din Court of Justice as pioneers in banning prostitution Avoda Zara p. 36a. There is, however, disagreement amongst Rishonim as to whether Salem was Melchizedek, Shem's allocated residence by his father Noah or whether he was a foreigner in Salem which was considered the rightful land of his brother Cham. The Ramban is of the opinion that the land was rightfully owned and governed by the offspring of Cham, and explains that Melchizedek, Shem left his home country and came to Salem as a foreigner wishing to serve God as a Kohen. However, Rashi maintains that the land of Canaan was initially allotted to Shem, by Noah his father, and the offspring of Cham conquered the land by forced expansion. Transition of the priesthood Although Melchizedek is the first person in the Torah to be titled a Kohen priest, the Medrash records that he was preceded in priesthood kahuna by Adam. Rabbinic commentarians to the Torah explain that Melchizedek sometimes associated with Shem was given the priesthood Hebrew, kahuna by receipt of his father Noah's blessing. G.D. beatified Yepheth and will dwell in the house of Shem i.e., he will merit to serve and host God as a Kohen. Torah laws require that the Kohen priest must be a patrilineal descendant of a prior Kohen. Leviticus Rabbah maintains that God intended to permanently bring forth the priesthood, Kahuna, through Melchizedek's patrilineal descendants, but since Melchizedek preceded Abram's blessing to that of God, God instead chose to bring the priesthood, Kahuna, forth from Abram's descendants. As the text states in regard to Melchizedek, and he is a Kohen. Meaning himself in the exclusive sense and not his patrilineal descendants, the Or Hahayim commentary presents that God was not angered by Melchizedek's preceding Abram's blessing to that of God, since Abram was rightfully deemed worthy of precedence for independently coming to recognize God amidst a world of paganism, but Melchizedek willingly gave the priesthood to Abram upon recognizing his outstanding uniqueness and godly character traits. Rabbinic authorities differ as to whether Kahuna was given to Abram there and then or after the demise of Melchizedek. The mid Rash records that Shem functioned as Kohen Gadol high priest in that he taught Torah to the patriarchs before it was publicly given at Mount Sinai, while the official title of high priest was conferred upon Aaron after the erection of the tabernacle. <laughs> Midrash text The Midrash quotes multiple aspects of both Melchizedek and Abram. The rabbis taught that Melchizedek acted as a priest and handed down Adam's robes to Abram. Numbers Rabbah 4 to 8. Rabbi Isaac the Babylonian said that Melchizedek was born circumcised. Genesis Rabbah 43 to 6. Melchizedek called Jerusalem Salem. Genesis Rabbah 56 to 10. The rabbis said that Melchizedek instructed Abram in the Torah. Genesis Rabbah 43 to 6. Rabbi Eliezer said that Melchizedek's school was one of three places where the Holy Spirit, Ruach Hakodesh, manifested Himself. Babylonian Talmud Makot 23b. Rabbi Judah said in Rabbi Nehorai's name that Melchizedek's blessing yielded prosperity for Abram, Isaac, and Jacob. Genesis Rabbah 43 to 8. Ephraim Mikshah the disciple of Rabbi Meir said in the latter's name that Tamar descended from Melchizedek Genesis Rabbi 85-10. Rabbi Hannah bar Bizna citing Rabbi Simeon Hasida identified Melchizedek as one of the four craftsmen of whom Zechariah wrote in Zechariah chapter 2 verse 3, Babylonian Talmud Sukkah 52b, see also Song of Songs Rabbi 233 crediting Rabbi Barakiah in the name of Rabbi Isaac. The Talmud teaches that David wrote the Book of Psalms, including in it the work of the elders, including Melchizedek. Thus according to Jewish legend, confusion over Melchizedek being both king and priest is solved by knowing that
that Shem was also a progenitor of the Davidic monarchy, which descended from both Judah and Tamar, who was sentenced to death by fire when accused of committing prostitution as the daughter of high priest Shem. In the Zohar The Zohar redacted by Moses de Leon c. 1290s finds in Melchizedek king of Salem a reference to the king who rules with complete sovereignty or according to another explanation that Melchizedek alludes to the lower world and king of Salem to the upper world Zohar 1 to 86 b 87a the Zohar's commentary on Genesis chapter 14 cites a rabbi Yitzchak as saying that it was God who gave tithe to Abram in the form of removing the Hebrew letter He from his throne of glory and presenting it to the soul of Abram for his benefit. The letter He is the letter God added to Abram's name to become Abraham in Genesis. Topic in Christianity. In the New Testament, references to Melchizedek appear only in the Epistle to the Hebrews later 1st century to early 2nd century, AD, though these are extensive Hebrews chapter 5 verses 6, 10, 6 20, 7 to 1, 10, 11, 15, 17, 21. Jesus Christ is there identified as a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek quoting from Ps. 110-4. Topic. Association with the Messiah The association or identification of Melchizedek with the Messiah predates Christianity, developing in Jewish messianism of the Second Temple period, a collection of early Gnostic scripts dating on or before the 4th century, discovered in 1945 and known as the Nag Hammadi Library, contains a tractate pertaining to Melchizedek. Here it is proposed that Melchizedek is Jesus Christ. Melchizedek, as Jesus Christ, lives, preaches, dies and is resurrected, in a Gnostic perspective. The coming of the Son of God Melchizedek speaks of his return to bring peace, supported by the gods, and he is a priest-king who dispenses justice. The association with Christ is made explicit by the author of the Epistle to the Hebrews, where Melchizedek the King of Righteousness and King of Peace is explicitly associated with the eternal priesthood of the Son of God. The Christological interpretation of this Old Testament character being a prefiguration or prototype of the Christ has varied between Christian denominations. The Pelagians saw in Melchizedek merely a man who lived a perfect life. Typological association of Jesus Christ with Old Testament characters occurs frequently in the New Testament. Thus, Jesus Christ is also associated with Adam as the new Adam and with Abraham. Liturgical commemoration Melchizedek is mentioned in the Roman canon, the first Eucharistic prayer of the Roman Rite of the Catholic Church, and also figures in the current Roman Martyrology as a commemoration on August 26. He is commemorated in the Eastern Orthodox Church on May 22, and on the Sunday of the Forefathers, two Sundays before Christmas. In the calendar of saints of the Armenian Apostolic Church Melchistek Armenian, Melchizedek Melchistek is commemorated as one of the Holy Forefathers on July 26. <laughs> Protestantism Traditional Protestant Christian denominations following Luther teach that Melchizedek was a historical figure and an archetype of Christ. Tremper Longman notes that a popular understanding of the relationship between Melchizedek and Jesus is that Melchizedek is an Old Testament Christophany, in other words, that Melchizedek is Jesus. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Latter-day Saint movement. In the Latter-day Saint movement, the Book of Mormon makes reference to Melchizedek Alma 1317-19. These priesthoods are laid out by Smith in Doctrine and Covenants 107 to 1-2, 4, 6 to 10, 14, 17 to 18, 22, 29, 71, 73, 76, as well as more than 20 additional references in that work. According to Encyclopedia Britannica, Joseph Smith 
appointed his male followers to priesthoods, named for the biblical figures Melchizedek and Aaron, that were overseen by the office of high priest, incorporating selected practices from the Hebrew Bible. See also Amraphel Arioch Lech Lecha Melchisedechians Righteous Priest Zadok Notes Further reading Dahlman, Robert W. 2013. Melchizedek, A Character Study. Niagara Falls, N.Y., Christlife. ISBN 9780991489600. Dahlman, Robert W. 1976. The Melchizedek Tradition, A Critical Examination of the Sources to the 5th Century AD and in the Epistle to the Hebrews. Cambridge, Cambridge University Press. Kugel, James L. Melchizedek. Traditions of the Bible, A Guide to the Bible as it was at the start of the Common Era. Cambridge, Harvard University Press. pp. 275–93. ISBN 0-674-79151-7. Manzi, Franco Melchizedek e Langelalohia nell'Epistola agli Abrei e a Qumran. Rome, Editrice Pontificio Istituto Biblico. p. 433. ISBN 978-88-7653-136-1. Matthews, Joshua G. Melchizedek's Alternative Priestly Order, a compositional analysis of Genesis chapter 14 verses 18-20 and its echoes throughout the tonic. Winona Lake, in, Eisenbrowns. ISBN 978-1-57506-820-6. Priesthood of Melchizedek. Let Us Reason Ministries, 2009. <laughs> <laughs> External links Media related to Melchizedek at Wikimedia Commons Chisholm, Hugh, ed. 1911. Melchizedek. Encyclopædia Britannica 11th ed. Cambridge University Press.